Now, there is no such thing as a safe tan, according to new NHS advice, which says people should put on eight teaspoons of sunscreen whenever the sun comes out. The new guidelines say that everyone should use at least a factor 15 sun cream and always reapply after swimming, even if it does claim to be waterproof. If the sun is strong enough that there's a risk you could burn, you should apply sun cream twice, half an hour before going out, and then again when you are in the sun. But the advice also says people should expose their arms and legs to the sun for short periods to build up vitamin D. So are we too in love with tanning? Well, I'm joined by Dr. Waliat Hussein of the British Association of Dermatologists and also joining us Gary Lipman, who helped produce the report and is also chairman of the Sunbed Association. Afternoon to you both. Uh, Gary, first to you. Are, are we too in love with tanning? Why are we in love with tanning? Well, it's all a matter of balance. Uh, we worked very hard on the committee to ensure that the message really was um, enjoy the sun but be safe, never be red at the end of the day and of course uh, when in the sunshine take precautions and especially if you're one of the vulnerable groups, people that uh, burn easily and don't tan, the advice very much is for them cover up but for most of the British public most of them can enjoy the sun and uh, never be red at the end of the day. It's a matter of balance. Dr Hussain, do you agree that we can enjoy the sun? Um, well, I think uh, we agree with the report that there's no such thing as a, as a safe tan. I think one of the things that we're trying to promote is an SPF of at least 30, simply because people don't apply sunscreen as often or as regularly as they should do, and therefore that would give them a greater chance of protection against burning. I think, again, as Gary's actually mentioned, we're trying to promote balance here. We're not saying people shouldn't go out and enjoy the sun, but they should take all necessary precautions in terms of seeking the shade, wearing appropriate clothing, and using the relevant sunblock. How many more cases uh, have you seen over the years? Have it, has it increased significantly, the number of patients you're getting through with melanomas? Well, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the UK is experiencing this tsunami of skin cancer. There are over 2,000 deaths from malignant melanoma every year in the UK, which is the most serious form of skin cancer. Add on to that over 250,000 cases of non-melanoma skin cancer. And this is a problem which is continuing to rise. And there's no doubt that UV exposure and burning is the greatest risk factor for this. And so public education is of primary importance. And as part of the British Association of Dermatologists, that safe promotion is what we're trying to get across to the public. And Gary, a public awareness campaigns have worked very effectively in other countries. But when you still have an industry uh, like the sunbed industry that sells tanning can that campaign get underway in earnest when you're saying come and tan with us can it be completely safe is it the right thing to be offering people well of course we're here today to talk about sun uh, sunshine but uh, you've brought up the subject of sunbeds and of course um, in a professional tanning salon uh, a member of the sunbed association people are properly screened and those who shouldn't tan are asked not to tan they're asked to fake tan so it's perfectly possible to get uh, the correct amount of exposure that's absolutely safe generate vitamin d levels and just as i said don't burn uh, it's very important that you don't overexpose. As I said before, it's a matter of balance. Enjoy the sun, uh, just don't burn. And uh, those messages are getting through. Um, and I, I, un unlike um, uh, the doctor you just, who's just spoken, I was on the committee. I, I helped put the report together. Melanoma cases are, um, are actually quite stable. They're not rising uh, in, a, at all. The fatalities are about the same every year. Mm -hmm. So people are getting the message and the awareness campaigns are out there and they're okay. getting through. Dr. Dr. Hussain, I wonder if that partially is because we are more aware because it's being talked about a lot more and, and perhaps we are more conscious of protecting children in particular. Well, I, th I think the, the message of if in doubt, check it out certainly is getting across to the public, but our data clearly shows in a busy uh, hospital department in which I work, there's certainly no uh, respite in terms of the number of new cases of skin cancer that we're diagnosing. Um, and I think in terms of, as, as Gary said, the, the report has got nothing to do with sunbeds, but I think it's quite clear that uh, sunbeds and skin cancer are like smoking for heart disease and lung cancer. Uh, we certainly will not be promoting sunbeds in any way, shape or form. Um, and while there may be members who are screening, such as the Sunbed Association, it's quite easy to have a sunbed and use it who are not members of 
of that association with no screening process. So as a dermatologist who deals with skin cancer day in, day out, I strongly advise all my patients against the use of sunbeds. Um, as you say, this, this report doesn't talk specifically about sunbeds. It does talk about sun creams. And I know there are many who feel uh, a lack of trust in sun creams. You, Dr Hussein, suggest a factor 30. The report suggests a factor 15. When trading standards do tests, some of the sun creams don't come out at the factors that they're telling you they are. Uh, Gary, do you think there should be a more transparent system of, of sun creams? Well, sun creams are cosmetic, they're not medical. And you're absolutely right, many research uh, papers have shown that they don't deliver what they are expected to deliver. Plus, the public seem not to put on the uh, correct quantity of sun cream. So yes, they, there re really needs to be more education in putting on enough sun cream and uh, the correct dosage and just uh, rub it in, um, not too much, um, but just make sure that sensitive parts of the body are covered. So yes, more education is required. Um, Dr. Hussain, the, the debate fueled somewhat by Hugh Jackman, who tweeted a picture of himself. Uh, he found uh, another mole. It's uh, the fourth or fifth time, I think, that uh, he's had to have an area of skin removed. He, he says he would like people to have more regular checks. What is your advice to people and how often should people get moles checked? Well, I think it's important that, as I said before, the bottom line is if there's anything on your skin which is changing, itching, bleeding, sore, not healing, the bottom line is if in doubt, check it out. Um, we'd much rather see people and reassure them. And initially, they'd go to their GP. If their GP is confident of the diagnosis, they can reassure them. If they're not clear or it may be a suspected skin cancer, then you can be seen, the patient can be seen in a hospital department within two weeks of their referral. So we have a very rapid access system for skin cancer patients in the health healthcare system in the UK. And we're advising people, as I said before, if in doubt, check it out. Dr. Eliat Hussein and Gary Lippman, thank you both for joining us on Sky News. Thank you very much.